and I work at Maribyrnong Libraries in Melbourne's Inner West. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this Global Learning Festival event. You've got an idea for a business, but how do you actually get started? Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I am joining from today, the Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and Boonwurrung peoples of the Kulin Nations. And I pay my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. I also acknowledge the traditional owners of the various lands on which you are all joining us from today and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in the event. If you'd like to type in the chat box, you can also share with us where you're joining us from today. I'm incredibly excited to introduce Kayleen Langford, founder of Startup Creative. Kayleen supports and champions a new generation of Australian entrepreneurs and business owners who are ready to grab their dreams by the horns and ride them off into the sunset. Kayleen recently published How to Start a Side Hustle, which has been described as pure brilliance. So no pressure, Kayleen. Relatable, actionable and full of savvy advice. In this workshop today, Kayleen will help you decide which direction to take with your idea, develop a clear business model, consider the values of your brand and how to communicate them, and stay motivated and on track in your journey. Just some quick housekeeping. If you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A or chat. And we'll also share an event survey at the end. So if you could please fill it in, that would be fantastic. And without further ado, I'd now like to hand over to Kayleen. Thank you so much for having me. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Kay or Kayleen. Um, I'm the founder of Startup Creative and I'd also like to acknowledge Aboriginal people uh, and traditional owners of this land on which we meet tonight and pay my respects to elders both past, present and emerging. Uh, thank you for being here. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, if you've got an idea for business, if you're running a business, maybe you've started a business and you're looking to get some uh, support in, in growing and scaling. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kay. I did write a book called How to Start a Side Hustle and unintentionally, I promise you, I accidentally dressed as my co the cover of my book tonight, um, which is pretty funny. But I, um, I wrote How to Start a Side Hustle. I was just telling um, the team here. I, uh, and in 2020, actually, and, and launched it in July 2021, 20, uh, so this year. Um, and it's so nice to be able to share this content with you guys. And I was kind of getting a bit emotional because uh, as we're coming out of lockdown and we're still a little bit online, um, feeling, yeah, that I haven't been able to be in one of my favorite places, which is libraries and bookshops and in-person events to share the book. So it's uh, so lovely to be able to still connect with you guys, no matter um, that we're still online. Uh, I've got some slides tonight, so I'm going to jump to those. I reckon we can smash out as much of the book as possible. Um, you can get it at the library or you can also buy it through the website or online. Um, bookshops, I highly recommend getting in and supporting. Um, but uh, we're going to we're going to run through the chapters. And the idea of this book for me and for the publisher, Hardy Grant, was that you could pick this book up and you could start from the beginning, come up with an idea or refine your idea and have a very step-by-step -step process on how to get that idea off the ground in the most practical, straight out way. And that is how I like to learn and it's how I like to business coach. I run a podcast, I do workshops and events and I have done for seven years. So it's kind of a, a condensed version of the last seven years of my life for $20. <laughs> um, and yeah, that you can walk away at the end of this book and um, and feel capable and uh, have an understanding of business. So just a bit of a background. Um, I was a youth worker for many years and then went on to advise government in Queensland about best practice for youth services. I worked with kids at risk in Indigenous communities and school system. Um, my job was program development and coming up, you know, concepting ideas and, and teaching them in relatable ways. And I was ended up climbing the ladder into the corporate world and doing all the things that I thought I was meant to be doing. Quickly found out that it was, wasn't for me and I was on a, a slippery slope to burnout. 
and had a bit of a health scare, took myself to the doctor. The doctor took me for a brain scan. The brain scan came back clean, but I had this 24 hours of, of going, what if something is going wrong? What would I do differently with my life? And realized that this idea of like going to a nine to five and and hustling for something that wasn't making me happy and that I didn't feel creative in um, wasn't the way that I wanted to be living my life. And I started going to some personal development courses and researching and and entrepreneurship and startup kept coming up. And this was 2014 and it just lit me up and I was like, this is me. No one ever told me I could have been an entrepreneur. And it just made so much sense. And the way that they were describing entrepreneurs were these people who, you know, had 30 jobs before they were 30 or they were tech savvy or um, creatives and coming up with solutions. And for me, I was like, this is how I want to be working. I don't want to be stuck in a, in a nine to five that, that I can't express what I want to be doing in my career. And so I started researching and, and seeking to understand and getting coaches and mentors and putting myself in that environment and came up with the idea of Startup Creative, which is uh, what we call the go-to source for straight up business advice. And I've, over the last seven years, I've printed five magazines, I've written a book, I have a podcast, coached thousands of people, run workshops for tens of thousands of people um, all around the world. And so, so for me, I came into this without an MBA or, you know, much business experience, but I knew that I, I wanted to design my dream life and my dream career. And that when I was in that funk, uh, there was no one coming to save me. So I had to be the one to do something about it. And so I went on the journey of figuring it out and, and teaching people along the way and breaking down what, when I started, was a very uh, male, men in suits, tech startup, corporate-y uh, feel to it. And have had many ups and downs along the way from people telling me my idea wouldn't work and that my name wasn't good enough and that I wasn't the right person to be running the business. So persevering through all of that and believing that there was a, a need for people who are creative and not necessarily business-minded but had beautiful ideas and things to bring to the world. And I wanted to help them make that happen. So here I am doing that seven years later and in a book version as well. Um, so thank you for being here. We've got Lillian who wants to start a side hustle um, and piqued her interest. Welcome Lillian. Great. So who else have we got in here? Um, yes, we've got some questions and we've got Jasmine who's, 25 has a business idea welcome jasmine yeah we're going to be recording as well for everyone who's asking all right let's jump in so my only request from you guys is to ask as many questions as you want you we've got a nice group here tonight you have me um i'm going to share for about 40 minutes i think and then we'll jump into some q a so there is a q a box or you can put it in the chat um or we can um yeah jump in that at the end and um, yeah, I'm here to help. So whatever it is that comes up, any questions, specifics, let me know and I'll do my best to give that uh, as much info for you guys tonight. All right, let's do it. I'm just keep my chat box open so I can keep an eye over here on where we're at. Okay, let's do this. How to start a side hustle. Okay, chat box is up, let's go. Oops, what is going on here? Okay, so at the very beginning of this book, I think I probably spent about a month um, researching and trying to write chapter one. And the book for me, the, the first chapter for me really needed to set the pace of why I think now is the right time to start a side hustle. And I think it's even more so I wrote it as COVID was hitting, to be honest. Um, but even more so, I've seen a huge increase in my business of people losing their jobs or working from home or quitting their jobs um, because of the, the change of environments in the world that we're living in. And the, the research that I was really passionate about and wanted to portray was that 
we had this um you know this change in our in how society ran and we went from working and living in villages to supporting each other and and finding our tools and our trade and what we're passionate about and prioritizing community to going into the industrial revolution where factories were able to make things cheaper and faster and export them and create demand so a lot of craftsmen uh, creators especially came out of uh, villages and went to work in uh, in the uh, um, in the factories, and we had to do mundane tasks repetitively, day in day out, and that's where we learned to clock in and clock out, and and to do the nine to five. Um, but some really amazing research that I found was that it actually years and years later have they've been able to see where it started declining our health by not having the autonomy over our lives, by not having creativity, not being able to prioritize our personal health and well-being in our community and our family. And I think for me, the, the biggest thing that really drew me to wanting to start a business was that it is so accessible and even more so from when I started. The social media apps, the, the PayPals, the websites, the Pinterest, so many digital things that we can do that means that we can get up, we can register an ABN and um, Australian business number and and get out there and start trading across the globe in a few clicks, which is pretty amazing. Of course, it's not that easy and it doesn't guarantee success, but that's what we're going to talk about tonight. But for me, it's been this opportunity to be like, question the norm, to question the trajectory of, of the life that we have always told that we should do, which is to go to school, to go to university, to get a job, pay the mortgage, do, you know, do what needs to be done. And that's the life that I was, my parents have, have lived and that I thought that I, I should also be living. So to be able to, to question and go, well, what if I was able to do what I love and get paid for it? And when I started asking that question and, and it started working for me, I was able to then teach other people how to do it. And so for me, I really do believe that when we have this passion or this creativity, whether you want to make it your full-time hustle or not, um, having it as a side hustle is a really viable way to get a business off the ground. And when I started, there was a lot of people who said, you know, one in three businesses are going to fail in the first six to 12 months and startups can't afford to get support and all these things. And I really do believe that's because we, there's, this, I, there's this way that we can have a side hustle that makes it a safe and affordable way to test an idea, which is a really vital part of the starting a business process. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but just for the definition, the side hustle is something that you do on the side of your main hustle. So you might have your main income and then a side hustle is a little like side project that we can test out. And whilst it can be very hard to manage your time and your energy and your resources to get a side hustle off the ground, it's actually a really good way to see whether you like doing the business, whether there's a need and a demand and a customer that likes what you have to offer, and then also whether um, it's going to be viable. So whether there's going to be enough profit in there as well. Um, uh, we got some questions here. How do you stand out amongst others? We'll jump into that for sure. So many businesses. Um, if the things you want to, yeah, so just quickly, I will jump on that. So how do you stand out against others? We're going to talk about your minimal viable product and coming up with something that you can take to market and then defining your point of difference as well, which is the way that you stand out. The trick here is really when we speak to the target market, I think it's really getting clear on exactly what it is that you want to do for somebody else and who needs that. And then you can go out and find your little pocket. You don't have to try and sell to everyone and do everything for everyone. And, you know, the diversity and also something that I'm really noticing is as consumers, we're getting more and more specific about the values that a brand holds as well. So if a brand is, you know, sustainable or locally made or you know fast turnaround whatever that value is um, people are really honing in on niches of deep down what a brand stands for which actually provides more opportunity for different brands um, to pop up and to do things differently okay 
So this is the from the a quote from the book. <laughs> um, a 2018 study conducted by Harvard Business, Harvard Business Review concluded that being forced to leave autonomous, self-created lives to work mundane jobs under constant supervision for minimal wages led to a clear decline in the physical and mental well-being of the population. Okay, let's come up with this perfect business idea, which will also answer the question about how you stand out. So first of all, when you're coming up with your idea, you really want to get clear about like, and I'm passionate about this, is like, what do you love to do? And you definitely, there's so many different business ideas out there and so many different business models and offerings that you can, that you can offer. Um, and I, I have business ideas all the time, but the ones that actually, and I see this in my coaching clients time and time again, the people who stick at ideas and push through when it gets hard and keep moving towards the end goal to get it off the ground, because it is going to be really hard work, especially on certain days. And you know, we've seen that through COVID. Um, if you love what you do and you're good at it and you are passionate about it and it lights you up, then chances are you're going to get up and keep going and going and going when the going gets tough. And a lot of people will give up, you know. And so when you're coming up with that idea, if you can start with, and in the book you'll find a bunch of worksheets in here um, around ask answering some of these questions. So looking at, so there's a whole activity um, section that you'll see in the book about what do you love to do if you could design your dream job and start there and you don't necessarily have to be like that's your exact business idea um, but it's a good place to start in terms of just brainstorming from a really big picture perspective you don't need to always be like cool I'm gonna do this sometimes that comes out um, but I work with many people and have lots of conversations of people like I could do this. What about that? I've got so many ideas. I don't know where to start. Start with getting them all out of your head and what really lights you up because that's going to give you a superhuman power when it gets really tough, right? Um, there's going to be days when you want to give up, even as somebody who's been in business for seven years and um, loves what I do and I'm, I'm very lucky at the, the success that I've had, there's still plenty of hard days that make you want to give up. But if you believe in it enough and you want it, then you will, um, it, it comes from a deep sense of purpose and passion. And, you know, you'll, you'll hear a lot of people talking about why, why, like, what is your why? For me, this is where, this is the questions. What do you love to do? What are you good at? Um, another good one, if you're looking for an idea and you, you know, I often get coaching clients who come and say, I just want to work for myself. I've always wanted to work for myself. Another good place to start is to say, what are you naturally good at? What if maybe people said, hey, can you help me with this? Or, you know, I really love the way that you do that. Or can I buy that artwork off you? Um, it's another good way to start seeing what a potential business model could be for you. Feel free to jump in with questions as we go. So as we have our business idea and we're kind of starting to map it out, what you want to understand is that a business is an exchange of value for money. So your job is to come up with a value, whether it's a solution that you can offer or a value add to somebody's life, and who is willing and able to exchange money for that. So the person who is willing and able is what we call your target market. Your target market should be the most important thing that you focus on in your business at this when you're starting a side hustle. Because so many people come in they're like, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to start this business and it's going to be great and here's all the bells and whistles. And I say, well, who's your target market and who's going to buy it and, and are they willing and able to buy it? And if you don't have a customer, then you just have a brilliant idea or you have a nice hobby, right? Something that you love to do. And I think that's where a lot of business owners can go wrong is they come in with their idea and whilst you might want what you have to offer, you also need to make sure that there's more than just you or your friends and family who want it in order for it to be viable and sustainable and to be able to make profit and keep growing. So putting your customer at the center is going to be key to having success in your business. And I still do this day in, day out of really seeking to understand. And, you know, you can do that through surveys 
through conversations, through posting in Facebook groups, to pulling a, a group of friends together, uh, to asking around. Um, and it's also okay to assume from the beginning. So again, um, in the work, there's a whole bunch of worksheets in here. I should have tagged the book. Um, that'll give you a bunch of questions in here about understanding who your target market is so that you can ensure that they actually want what you have to offer. So once you've kind of started with that idea of like, okay, what do I love to do? What could that look like as a business? You know, maybe I'll sell my art or I'm really good at graphic design or I want to teach people, okay, what am I good at teaching? Um, you kind of come up with a rough idea. We're not even jumping into starting the business yet. We're now just going to go and find if there's people who are willing and able to buy from you what you have to offer. So your job is to go as deep as you possibly can into understanding your audience <laughs> as per page uh, 29. <laughs> and um, there's some questions in here, which I'll read some for you now. So what is the problem or the need that you have identified for them? Who do you think needs this solution? What belief or, um, do they have around this problem or the value that they're looking for? And you want to go into as much detail as possible. Not only is this going to help you to go, okay, this is who I think would buy it. Then from there, it will inform what colors you use, what tone of voice you use, how much you think they would be able to afford or that they would be willing to pay. Where are they currently getting it and why is yours different? Uh, why would they choose you over where they're currently getting it? Or what don't they like about where they're currently getting it? Um, and how will you make their life better? The biggest thing if you can, and not all businesses, a lot of businesses add value. So, you know, clothing and jewelry and things like that. Um, art again, um, music, but a lot of businesses will solve a problem for people. So they will, you know, for me as a business coach is giving straight up business advice. So what is the, the solution that you're offering? What is the thing that you can go to them and say, hey, this is what I've got and that you can get that response that says, oh, this is exactly what I've been looking for. This is exactly how I want to get my business advice. This is exactly the kind of design that I would like for my logo, whatever it might be, yeah? So try and really carve out what it is that you're going to do differently. So business in exchange for value for money, what problem are you solving or how will you make their life better and really spend a lot of time here. If you, you can use the worksheet to kind of like um, assume at the beginning, but then you can you want to validate it. So you want to start to find people and we'll jump into that next, um, but really start asking questions. And a lot of people get scared to, to say, you know, this is my business idea. What do you think? But it's actually, that's just our ego and we get a bit scared to put ourselves out there. But that's really vital information because without that real data, uh, you might just have an idea in your head that maybe isn't going to translate in the real world. Um, so you can start asking those questions or accessing the people that you think that um, would be your target market. And it's really important here to not like just go to friends and family because often they'll give you a bit of a biased opinion. Um, you want to act as people and, and say, look, would you buy this? And they're like, yeah, I would, but I'd spend this much. Or, um, nah, I've already got a really great brand. And then you like, what do you love about that brand? So it's all really important information and feedback and try not to take it too personally um, at the beginning. And then we need to get in the game. So we've done our, we've come up with our idea. We've, we've got some ideas of, we think that there's enough people who would want what we have. And this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. This is where the fear and the self-doubt really starts to kick in. And people, you know, just start, want to ask that question. Should I quit my day job? Or, you know, um, yeah, I just want to do this all the time. And often this is where the momentum starts to build. We're really spending all this time on the back end. Um, this is where before you go in too deep and start spending all your money on a $20,000 website or ordering 100,000 stock from, <coughs> from your suppliers, excuse me, um, then you want to actually do one very important step, which is to decide, uh, get one paying customer that is not your mum. 
and get somebody who is going, they might not exchange full dollar from the beginning, but they're willing to exchange something in for what you have, okay? And that is going to do wonders because, A, it, it's what they call validating an idea, um, but then you can also get real-life feedback as to how you went and whether it was it, your product worked or whether your services was, you know, smooth and flowing or or you were good at what you did, what you were able to do, whether you liked it, whether they liked it. Um, in this, when I, I remember being in this space, and I think my first ever business coaching session I did was like $50. I did a 90-minute session. I sat in the park with a friend of a friend because I didn't have an office. Um, I did about three hours either side of the session. So probably ended up paying myself like, you know, $5 an hour for the amount of effort that I went into it. Um, and then, you know, over the years, as I was able to build my reputation, build my outcomes, build uh, my skill set and my knowledge, I was able to increase my prices. But I didn't come in with that from the beginning. Um, so we had another question in there. Yeah, Christy's over there. Um, so you want to get in and just get that minimal viable product. What is the quickest way you can get something? to a customer and get as much possible feedback, yeah? Uh, and then you just need to jump in, take the leap. And this is my favorite quote, a year from now, you'll wish you started today. Um, and for me, I think that that's where so many people get stuck. Sometimes planning the back end, the branding, the logo, the idea, talking about it, um is easy and it's exciting and we want to spend lots of time there and jumping in and actually going and asking someone to buy what you have is really scary but it's scary because most of the time we've never done it before or it's something that we love and we're scared of that rejection Renee Brown talks a lot about that fear of shame is one of the scariest things that humans will ever experience that keep us small and keep us from taking action and it's stepping into into it and, and getting in the game. And I had this with a client recently. Um, I reckon I supported them for about a year coming up with the idea. And we, we spun around about three different ideas. Finally, we got in, uh, you know, started putting it all together, the website, the branding, the nice things, and then actually launching and getting in. It was so scary. It was kind of like, go, you go, it's time, you're ready. Um, and the lessons that have been learned along the way from, um, you know, that we could not have put, possibly answered or predicted or known that they were going to come up unless you were in the game. Um, so getting those, uh, getting in there, you will learn so much from just starting and being able to be okay in the fear and the unknown and the, the, the overwhelm of it all. Um, you can do things like support, get business coaches or join support groups or mentors or, you know, communities to help you in that space because it's unfamiliar territory. If you've only ever worked a nine to five and you haven't started a side hustle before, it's going to feel uncertain. And the more that you can sit in that and just learn and, and support yourself, um, it's going to be invaluable to it. Cool. I have to plan my product service to be free to the consumer. Do I make profit through brand partnerships? So I, I plan to have my product service to be free to the consumer. Do I make profit through brand partnerships? Yes, I'm guessing so, Jasmine. Um, my question, my, my response to that would be somebody's got to pay for it, I'm guessing. Uh, so that could be grants, scholarships, um, you know, investments. Um, partnerships for sure. It'd be, I'd be interested to hear if you want to put it in the chat and felt okay with it, um, Jasmine, if you want to go deeper into that and I can give some more context based on what that might look like. Okay, so once we've, we've got our idea, we think we know someone who's going to buy it, we've tested it out, we've got some sales, the next step is then we can start really packaging it up and investing in it. A lot of people want to go straight to this place because it's the fun part, um, but you need to test and validate your idea first and foremost. Then we can start to go into putting your packaging together, putting your brand together. 
So your branding is like your way to communicate to the to your audience to to present yourself and say this is who I am and this is what I stand for. It's kind of a, a hidden language in a sense that uh, a secret language that's talking on your behalf. So uh, most of us will identify certain brands and a really good example is um, I love coffee and I especially love specialty coffee. Um, so if I'm ever in a new city or, or, or town, you kind of look out for the place that, you know, there's a certain type of coffee shop where you're like, I think they would do a filter or a pour over or, um, you know, something specialty or a nice black. Um, and you can kind of tell, you know, when you walk past the shop where you're like, is that for me or not? That's what branding is doing. That is that it's telling you whether you relate to them or you think you'd like them or whether they're your kind of business or brand, right? Um, so your branding is that. So when we go back to that target market, it's really going, what does my customer believe in? What other brands do they love and trust? You know, what, um, what colors do they wear? You know, how do they talk? Where are they spending their time? All of those things are going to help you to create a brand that's going to communicate to them and draw them to you as well. So ask that question, where is your audience? And understand that with branding, especially, you don't want to try and do it all, right? I think it's it's really important to keep it simple. You don't need to go and spend lots of big money from the get-go. You just need to commute, you need to put it all together in a way that says this is who we are and this is what we stand for. And it'll speak on your behalf. Um, some really important things to consider with branding and, you know, putting putting you out there is know that it is talking on your behalf, you know. So if you're trying to produce a sustainable brand, then it, maybe it is a very simple website with minimal colors, right? Um, you know, the same with Startup Creative, if there is a lot of bold colors and and you know i guess youthful or fun tone because we're we're trying to be relatable or straight up and different and creative in our business advice um so it's going to come down to your tone of voice your colors that you use um you know your layout if you're running events what kind of venue what kind of catering what kind of music um all of those things you know your packaging on your on your products um, all of that is an opportunity for you to tell your customer way, what you stand for. Um, we also have a, a whole chapter in here that um, goes through like all the back end. So tips on getting um, where your website, coming up with your brand values is a really another important chapter in here where we talk about, um, you know, what do picking out four to six core values that you as a brand want to stand for um, and that you think would relate to your customer? And then how do you present that to across your platforms without necessarily having to be like, we're young and or we're sustainable, um, but do that through all the different touch points where your customer will interact with you. Got some questions coming in here. Um, awesome. Okay, so Jasmine, my brand is going to support women's reproductive rights and I want to be free across Australian clinics but I need a government grant yeah I mean I think if you're going to offer something for free then definitely um somebody's got to pay for it so I think um grant fundraising crowdsourcing um maybe there's there's a philanthropist or investment firm there's maybe some startup capital that you could get um perhaps maybe there's like you you know a one for one thing so if there's, you know, maybe people who can afford things um, or, you know, there's, you know, it's almost, um, and I think Homey do it, the, the clothing brand here in Melbourne of like uh, for certain clothes that people buy, they donate one for homeless. So there's lots of different business models that you can get in and around. What I would do, Jasmine, is to start researching and looking into what other business models are out there. So there's obviously grants and funding. Um, but look and start looking into social enterprise models. I think that could be a good place for you to start. All right. Okay, so you kind of package yourself up, right? There's again, I was just saying in here. There's um, there's advice in here on getting your uh, copy, so like your tone of voice together. Uh, where where what websites, what to consider for putting on your website, all of that. Um, there's a bit of as a checklist in there. Okay, so then we're going to jump into marketing. So we've packaged ourselves up and now we want to jump into 
starting to then go and communicate what we do and find the people who are willing and able. So marketing is simply communicating what you do to your target market. So some things that I see often um, is content creation. Uh, you might know this as Instagram posts, you know, uh, email, sending out email blasts, a podcast, um, blog posts, all of those things, video, YouTube videos, uh, even tonight, this is content creation, right? Is me going out and, and giving some advice on what I do for free sometimes and giving a bit of a teaser and an insight into what you do, um, whether that's, you know, a free download on your website or some tips on Instagram, uh, sending out a mailing list with some recipes, things like that. So, again, coming back to the target market, understanding not only why they're coming to you for what you do, but what else might they like, you know? So, you know, are you also going to show them a little bit of a, your personal life of how you Marie Kondo your house, you know, or are you going to show them, you know, that you're at a market on the weekend or, you know, other aspects as well that will be part of your brand values. Um, so creating that content, it's really important to not just go into sale, 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 buy, buy, buy especially with marketing, which we could do a whole webinar on, um, it is very much about relationship building. So that content creation, the mailing list, coming up with all these different places that your audience is either engaging with you or could potentially find you and going out to them to be like, hey, this is what we do. Do you know about us? And here's how we can help. Um, and also building that trust and rapport by giving away some content. So the current kind of ratio of, um, I'm sure it changes all the time, <laughs> but one in four pieces of content, whether that's posting on Instagram or um, mailing list, blog posts, uh, should be a call to action. So CTA, call to action. You don't want to just be selling because it's uh, a lot of marketing trends and advertising trends are showing that that loses trust and people just are, are, are on guard to being sold to straight away. If you can and your business is relevant, then I definitely recommend being the face of the business or showing, you know, why you started it and, and your brand values and, and what you do behind the scenes. It's very big on building that trust, especially as we are in this online space where we are losing trust with, you know, bots and ads and algorithms. Uh, the more that we can show a face and be like, this is me, this is my brand, this is my business, this is why I do what I do. Um, it's going to be helping you to build a trusted audience um, by being a real person. Uh, and measure everything. Keep an eye on your marketing. So sometimes a lot of people will just be like, cool, I'm going to do all these marketing things. I highly recommend picking out a couple. Again, there's a whole bunch of recommendations in the book. Uh, giving them a go, measuring it, and seeing what works. So, you know, if, you, if you're sending an email and you get five inquiries or five sales from that, then your audience likes hearing from you from email. Again, you can be asking these questions directly to your audience or in groups and things like that. Oh, cool. one of my favorite chapters in the book is mindset hacks. So, you know, there's something that I've learned over seven years is like I can give you the perfect business plan and a book on how to start a business and, um, you know, is, is the right marketing strategy and the best website. Uh, but if you get up every day and you doubt whether you're good enough or other people are going to outdo you or, you know, you get scared to post on Instagram because you don't know what to say, uh, there are all those little mind tricks that are going on that all of us have all the time. I need everyone to know that because we're always uh, struggling. You know, that there'll always be more, a bigger risk to take or, you know, things that don't go right and will, you know, spiral into self-doubt. Um, but some things that I've really noticed is that those who are able to master that mindset of an entrepreneur and know that it's it's going to be a lot of unknowns, it's going to be scary, it's going to re require risk or backing yourself when no one else backs you, uh, they're all parts of the journey and they don't necessarily go away. If nothing else, maybe they even get scarier and bigger, the bigger that you get in business. Um, but some things that have helped me, have to have a morning routine so you know it's in, in busy times it's easy to want to jump up and just start you know jumping straight onto emails and feeling like you can never have enough time in the day uh, but starting a day with a really clear intention of what goal you're setting out to achieve 
And then, you know, what I tend to do is write my to-do list the night before and or on the Sunday evening, I tend to just write it now the night before. So at the end of each day, I'll rewrite my to-do list so it's ready to go. And it's really clear what needs to be done in my business. So setting out, okay, what's the next step for my business? What is What needs to happen? Have I got my first paying customer? Have I done my marketing? Have I, you know, uh, gone out and got in front of more of my target market today? And then look at your to-do list and prioritize it around what is the outcome that you're you're wanting to achieve. Um, so there's a bunch of tips in there about overcoming procrastination and overwhelm and things like that. Coaches and mentors, I've had them from the very beginning, and that's one of my favorite parts of my, my job is to be able to inspire people to keep going when it gets hard and, and give them an outside perspective as well. Um, and I really do believe you are the average of the people you spend the most time with. So, you know, for me, I remember going from people in nine to fives and, and I was like, I'm going to start a business and like just didn't get it. Eventually, now all of my friends work for themselves or freelancers or run their own companies. So um, it, you find those people who you can bounce the ideas off and get support from. And knowing that it's going to get hard and that it's not always going to go to plan. And almost every second day there's a fire to put out or a website to fix or, uh, you know, an email to reply to. Um, but you can either spiral into that and be like, poor me, like this is so hard. And you can give up. Everyone can give up. There's, they, have that, they have that choice. Um, but if you can be like, okay, cool, that didn't work. What do I need to do to fix it? And keep zooming out and, and getting that perspective. Um, I tend to find that that will keep you going on the path. Um, so we've got other chapters in there, which we won't go into all of them tonight, but I'll, I'll try and get to some questions. So um, there's money mindset. Uh, there's uh, tips on pricing in there. Um, the power of building your team as well. So like getting the accountants and outsourcing the things that necessarily aren't your strong suit. Um, there's tips in there around goal setting, which is, I think, very vital. So once you kind of come up with that idea and you get it, uh, you test it out, then you package it up and then you go out and find the people, listen and learn and and keep setting new goals and be like, great, cool, I got one customer. Um, now how, next month I'm going to get three customers and and keep setting those goals because if you don't have an end goal, you don't have something you're working towards, um, it'll be really easy to just get stagnant or to get distracted um, and, and pulled in a different direction um, or to just give up and feel like you're not getting anywhere. So one of your biggest things you really want to be able to do is just, you know, have that vision. And for me, it was saying that we wanted to be the go-to source for straight up business advice for someone anywhere in the world who would say, you know, I have an idea for a business and I want to get off the ground. And that somebody would say like, you hit, read this book or listen to this podcast or, you know, you should speak to Kay from Startup Creative. Um, and I'm so grateful that, you know, seven years ago when I was coming out of a really shitty job that I was so miserable in that I can sit here and say, wow, they, I literally have coaching clients all around the world who have thought to come to Startup Creative to get that help. Um, so. Once you set that clear goal and that intention, you, you've got to get up every single day and work in that direction. Uh, and then the final chapter is scaling and beyond. So once you've kind of got that idea and I give you those first few chapters, because once you start marketing and getting in front of your target market, you can learn so much and you can grow. And, and what tends to happen is you, you follow the energy of what, what's happening. Are people liking it? What aren't they liking? And remember to get out of your own way and know that, it's not necessarily about you. It's about being of service to your customer. And so showing up for them and what they want and what they're liking and, and not liking. Okay. And that's startup career. That's a, how to start a startup. <laughs> uh, but I've got some time. I think we've got 10 minutes for any questions. Um, at what point would you recommend hiring a graphic designer? Can you DIY? Yeah, absolutely. So um, outsourcing is a big question, which is hiring people. I made my first ever logo on a Word document. It was pretty horrible, <laughs> but I put it on top of a Word document and wrote a course outline for how to turn a passion into a business. 
and I went and I sold it to councils and universities and and that's how I launched my business so it wasn't flashy it got me by you know and I built my own website and then as I was making money in the business then I was like great I can now keep reinvesting in this and then eventually was able to um yeah upgrade my logo with a full branding package um but I think when it comes to outsourcing whether it's graphic design or anything else you want to kind of consider um you know is this can I do this like Canva is a really good one as well also friends and family like you know do do some good old bartering and being like you know can I help you out with this can you help me out with this um and Canva is amazing for that as well uh but get something out there and get in the game and you know reinvest when you can afford it if it's not on in the budget from the get-go um do I have any tips on someone who is stuck in the creative rut feeling uninspired how to rediscover joy in their side hustle yeah great question um I would say sometimes if you're in a creative rut (laughs) you need a break (laughs) and you know especially coming off the back of COVID um sometimes the rut is there to show us that we we might need some perspective and so I'm definitely not opposed to, especially I've learned this a lot this last two years, um, to just let the rut be there and to create space because often if we're in a rut and we keep trying to push forward, uh, we don't have new ideas. Our brain is in almost fight or flight and we're kind of stuck doing this kind of negative um, cycle. And you actually need to be able to get out, get a breather and and open your perspective up again and, and fill yourself up creatively. So you might want to do things like, you know, create for the sake of creating, not to make money or to, to hustle. Um, you know, spend time with other creative people and feel yourself creatively. So you know, I'm a really, I love neuroscience and understanding the mind. And I really, you know, when you feed your brain content that is creative and inspiring, then you're actually get firing new neuro pathways, which means that your brain has got more data and information points and can light up and, and, and solve things in, in new and creative ways. Um, also like having an outside perspective. So whether that is sometimes for me, it's good friends. Sometimes it's a coach. Uh, sometimes it's an accountant <laughs> as just someone being like, cool, like I'm going to just say what I see here or I'm going to reflect back to you what I think you're good at or, you know, maybe you could move in it and that synergy of bouncing ideas um I think really helps so hopefully that helps um but yeah thank you so much everybody for being here and um I hope it has been helpful uh if you do pick up a copy of the book uh we'd love for you to leave a review somewhere on the internet (laughs) would be helpful uh this is the best yeah Kaylee what is the best or most memorable piece of advice that you received when you were starting out your business journey. Uh, The quote that really helped me was, uh, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And that was the quote that helped me to go, I I need to get myself out of this rut and I can see a new future. I can see this reality where I'm not on a train for six hours a day and I don't wake up with headaches and I'm, you know, not miserable in my job. And I started believing that I could work for myself and I wouldn't have to work Mondays if I didn't want to and uh, take holidays when I wanted to without, like, you know, applying for leave. And I just, I held on to that vision. It was my mind could conceive it and believe it. And even though there was days where I was like, is this even happening? Like, is this ever going to work? I just kept going, yeah, I'm going to keep putting one foot in front of the other and there is no such thing as an overnight success. Like it really, you, it's it's not a quick fix. It really is taking one small step every day in the direction of that vision, for sure. I hope that helps. Thank you so much. My absolute pleasure. It's so nice to be collaborating with libraries because I spent a lot of time in them growing up. And um, yeah, sharing a book is like, that's where you want them to be, right? <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it.
Okay, Kaylee, we've just got one last question here. Any tips on how to cut through in a crowded social media space? Yeah, good question. Um, crowded social media space. Um, create unique content. So, be, and I think authenticity is really cutting through at the moment on social media. It's really easy to, you know, post a nice photo and, you know, a caption that doesn't really, you know, say much. Um, but think about what's your audience, what problem are you solving, how can you show up and be of service to them or add value to their life, and where possible, try and give an authentic, real human voice. Um, because I think people are sick of just like the cut copy stuff. Um, video is obviously very popular on social media. If you can <laughs> get your bring yourself to do it, I know a lot of people get scared. Um, but yeah, what's authentic to you? You know, when you try to be what other people are doing, it's going to come across fake and look like everyone else's stuff. So, what's your authentic voice and tone? Um, and and you know how how are you showing up to solve problems or add value? to the people who are following you uh, because if you're just posting for the sake of posting why would why would people stop um and then I think just my other piece of advice on social media is to get off it <laughs> there's, there's um I just think it's don't put all your eggs in that basket is what I would say grow a mailing list uh get people visiting your website you know get out and do like networking with other people uh host events like get creative um in social media is one way but it is also it's very tumultuous and it's um it's changing rapidly every day and it's unpredictable so yeah it used to be a really powerful tool but I think it's definitely losing a little bit of its cut through so some of that is out of our control and I would just say to safeguard yourself and um create other ways to build an audience great thank you um, now I just wanted to say a big thank you, Kayleen, for joining us this evening. That was wonderful. And um, I jotted down a few things that you said, and I'm sure everyone else got a lot out of it. And thank you for all the participants who attended. We will be sending out a link. Oh, just some feedback now. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, so we'll be sending out a link of the recording, hopefully later in the week. And a just you can purchase. How, how to start a side hustle at any good bookshop or always remember to borrow it from your local library. And we do have in the chat a little survey if anyone has um, time to fill that in, that would be wonderful. So thanks again for joining us for the Global Learning Festival and we'll hope to see you soon. Thanks, Kayleen. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here, everyone.